to have people with pens. Eight. Eight. Yes, eight.
Council President Kathleen E. McNamee, Council at Large Carlos Vidal, Council Ward 6 Sean Durkee, Council Ward 7 Paul Katz, Mayor Jeanette McCarthy, and Planning and Housing Departments. De ser así, por favor, levante la mano. Gracias. Thank you. Thank you. 
Um, it's, a, it's a storefront right by the, uh, the banks of the Charles River. It's been vacant for a very long time. It's now actually a dangerous building because the roof caved in. Um, I'm actually very concerned. That's a very delicate area right there. It's a very vulnerable area right by the banks of the Charles River. We have to be thinking about adapting to our changing climate. Climate change is here. We can't be continuing to ignore it, okay? And, um, you know, historically, people in lower income areas, Ward 9 being one of them, are the ones disproportionately affected by the harms of climate change. And I think um, it would be in our best interest to be thinking about how to make that area resilient to what's coming next. Um, we're going to be seeing more crazier storms, more surges, and sea level rise, and potentially even flooding by the river. Um, and I think that leaving that area vacant and um, not really getting input from the people that live in Ward 9 is um, not a good idea. <laughs> um, I feel like we should be putting the input of the people that live in the area, um, they should be putting some input in. Um, and also, again, thinking about the, the really importance of these riverbeds right now with our climate changing. It's happening now. We can't be thinking about, oh, it's happening in 10 years now. now. Um, as somebody who lives by that area, I'm just concerned about the, the building continuing to become dilapidated and injure people because people kind of sleep by there. It's a busy area, a lot of foot traffic. And, as somebody who has a little bit of pride in Waltham, it's a lovely city, I love living here, it's, it's prime real estate. <laughs> and it's been empty for over a decade and just collapsing. So uh, that is my issue I wanted to bring forward. Thank you. to have uh, trash bins given to all the city residents the same way the recycling bins are done. Uh, James Portellis, 19 Boreham Street, number four. Okay, so I'll go next. My name is Robin Morgan, 109 Cannon Street, Walton, Ward 9, lifelong resident of the South Side, former councilor. Uh, first, I just want to thank uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee for having this, I think, the most important aspect of a uh, master plan process is public input, and I see it's scheduled a number of meetings, and that's great. Uh, one thing that I would suggest uh, is that at some point you engage with service as a professional consultant to assist you with assembling the uh, final product. You could probably get some assistance from the Metropolitan Area Planning Council. Um, the master plan should include goals that are clearly stated and that are quantifiable uh, and that there should be periodic public uh, updates uh, as to progress on those clearly quantifiable uh, goals and uh, milestones in order to introduce an element of accountability to the master plan. Uh, some of the areas that I wanted to touch, and I think they align with what we had in the sheet, zoning and land use planning, open space, environmental and sustainability infrastructure, and uh, then uh, on diversity, equity, and inclusion. On the zoning, uh, just um, one thing is I think uh, one of the most important things over there is affordable housing. Uh, and I know I've only got three minutes, so I can't talk a lot, a long time about any of these, but um, the city of Waltham doesn't have the resources to create as much affordable housing as we need. The only way to create it is through the set aside through the developers. Uh, and I haven't seen an application for a special permit in four years. So I might want to take a look at what it is in zoning that's uh, holding that up. Always be careful on zoning changes. Uh, be, be aware of the law of unintended consequences. When you make a change in those to do one thing, sometimes it does something else. Open space. Uh, my recommendations in that are put all existing and developed municipal property into conservation restrictions. Uh, identify land for additional open space acquisition. Uh, pay particular attention to the south side. I'd like to see the continuation of uh, uh, 
uh, developing pocket cocks like I did with when I uh, had them build the uh, chemistry station cock. Uh, in the existing master plan, is a uh, in four different places it mentions a parcel, 67 Crescent Street. It's a vacant lot. It's been vacant since 1975. Uh, it, the existing master plan in four different places mentions that as a target for acquisition. We brought in a few things. We actually brought the CPA committee to appropriate the money that we never got through to actually acquire the property. I hope that that, that will happen. Uh, environmental and sustainability. Uh, all future municipal buildings, new and uh, extensive renovations, should be carbon neutral. Uh, the city should adopt policies that discourage this construction of new fossil fuel um, infrastructure. Uh, for example, we should uh, not be allowing the gas company to put in new gas mains. If they want to repair existing mains, that's fine to, to eliminate leaks, but building more natural gas infrastructure in the city just doesn't make sense. We're trying to get away from uh, fossil fuels. Trees. Double the tree requirement in parking lots under zoning. Uh, the city should commit to a net increase of the number of trees on public land each year, uh, especially in the south side because you have a heat island. Uh, I'm almost done. Uh, infrastructure, increase, increase the minimum acceptable PCI for roads. And finally, one thing that's not on your list, and I think it should be part of the master plan, is diversity, equity, and inclusion. Uh, to how to increase that in municipal hiring and appointments to boards and commissions. And also, I would hope that the master plan, in, in the same vein, the master plan should be made available online in multiple languages. Thank you. My name is Kevin Dawes. I live at 16 Gorham Street. Uh, thank you for this opportunity for public input. I think it's really important to hear from everyone in the city and the little tour around uh, we're doing. I think that's great. Um, so thank you for that. Uh, I agree with what uh, Robert said about reducing the need of fossil fuel infrastructure here in the city. Um, looking forward, uh, many uh, states and countries are looking to eliminate the sale of internal combustion engine cars, um, and many of us have bought electric vehicles or are considering it, um, but fossil fuel infrastructure is all around us. Um, within six, seven hundred feet of my apartment are five different auto garages. Um, these are buildings and businesses that we won't need um, as we transition toward electric vehicles, and we should uh, start considering removing them. You go up and down Main Street, we see used car lots, we see tire stores, um, we see, you know, service stations, gas stations. Uh, these are buildings that we no longer need uh, going forward, uh, and we should look to, to start licensing them um, like we would um, packies, so to be able to reduce the number that we have in our communities. Um, also being able to restrict natural gas in construction. Uh, many nearby cities and towns, Arlington, Cambridge, Newton, Brookline, Lexington, um, have all tried to put in, I believe, home rule petitions to uh, stop the use of new natural gas in construction. We should be looking to adopt the same. Um, cars not only uh, do not fit with our climate goals, but they do not uh, allow for safe streets. Um, just within a couple hundred feet of my apartment, there, is, there was a fatal accident several years ago at Elmond Pine, and there are continuous accidents at the corner of Newton Oak and Taylor. Um, I know whoever lives at that uh, house has had to replace their fence many times. Um, if, uh, if there was an accident like that at my job and my boss told me, what are you going to do about it, and I said nothing, I would probably be fired. Um, I would hope that we could have a more proactive solution for the traffic violence on our streets. Uh, recently, uh, the City Council approved money to purchase uh, what used to be the Bank of America, um, just a block or so that way, um, with the plan of turning it into a parking lot. We don't need a parking lot. We need green space. We need housing. Um, parking lots explicitly benefit those who live outside of our community to come here. They do not benefit the people living in the community. Um, 
speaking specifically about the need for housing. I, I know that there are several districts in Waltham um, that have historic status explicitly for the housing that was there, the housing that housed the workers at uh, Boston Manufacturing Company, at the watch factory, um, and it's a shame that we figured out how to house our working class over 100 years ago, and that we can't do that today. Um, and, and finally, I'm a member of the, new, the Green New Deal Coalition uh, here in the city, uh, a group of citizens uh, concerned about climate and understand that uh, local action is best for addressing that. Um, and we really would like to see a fully pedestrianized movie street year-round. Uh, this has been a real successful program that we've had for three summers now, um, but the constant um, uh, closing to cars, opening to cars, back and forth, um, makes it frustrating for residents and businesses to be able to plan forward. Um, also, being able to not have a uh, infrastructure and an environment on the street that is suitable for both uses. Um, being able to move forward um, with a fully pedestrianized uh, Moody Street that is accommodating to the restaurants, the specialty stuff shops, and a lot of the uh, local uh, businesses, whether they're clothing stores, convenience stores, uh, hairdressers, um, that really celebrate the diversity of the community. Um, that's an important site that will be a beacon of community that not only other people look to Waltham from outside the community, but that we can look from internal as well, um, creating a space for a community that we can share with our neighbors. Uh, and I hope that that uh, will be a, it won't be a change just for Moody Street, it will be a change of the larger neighborhood as well, um, but I hope we can uh, move forward to that. Thank you. Hello, my name is Tom Benavides. I live at 80 Hope Avenue, apartment 104, resident of Ward 10, and I'm here because I would like to talk about walkability within the city as well as uh, getting more affordable housing. Primarily, I'd especially like to follow up with what was said before about a walkable Moody Street. I would like to um, follow up on what was said before. I also am a big fan of the walkable Moody Street, um, especially with the fact that it has also been mentioned that Southside is a big heat island and needs more green space. Currently, a lot of the land use in Moody Street is just pavement. And as we pedestrianize it, we can also use more of that area for purposes that are not just oriented to getting cars from one into another of that segment of Moody Street. We can focus on infilling that area with trees and green space and also just communal areas where people can sit down uh, and have a bite or have a chat with a friend between stopping between stores without actually having to be actively buying or eating something to be able to sit down. I think Moody Street has a lot of potential as a walkway area that can be developed beyond just blocked off pavement that is right now. Additionally, uh, just as a pedestrian around the city, it does not feel very dangerous. A lot of the city is oriented towards cars. Um, a big primary point is I live, like I said, at Idaho Hope Avenue. My primary quarters to get to both Moody Street and to the commuter rail station are Felton Street, the River Walk, and to cross the bridge to Moody Street. Within those areas, Felton Street especially, I'm never the only one on that road walking or biking or skateboarding. There are always many others, and it's a very unsafe area that is, um, it doesn't have very good pavement. And it's incredibly wide road as well. That is an area where, like just pure spacing wise, you could have a parking lane, two bike lanes, and a driver's lane one direction. Um, and I just think it's very underutilized. Additionally, whenever you're taking uh, the river walk uh, down, I find that area to be heavily, um, it's a very nice area. I think that's a great thing that the city has, but with the pedestrian intersection getting there, on both sides, anytime the river walk intersects with a road or a bridge, the crossings are always very narrow. There is never like a risen walkway to make it safer for pedestrians or to slow cars down. We're always relying on cars being able to see the light and not just zooming around the corner at 30 miles an hour before looking. Uh, it is like very much a notice on the pedestrian as opposed to the driver and feels fairly dangerous. I would appreciate raised pedestrian crossings more across the city in general, but especially at those areas. And widened as well, because there's never an area where like the bike trail actually lines up 
with, or the Riverwalk Trail lines up with the crosswalk. Same with the lights. It's always very inconvenient, a hassle, especially whenever there's a buildup of pedestrians and bikers at that particular area. It's always just people bumping into each other. Um, yeah, and if I, what was that? Oh, okay, cool, cool. And just a second point is I would also like to advocate for more uh, dense housing, rent, and homeownership is just way far out there, but it's like incredibly expensive. And across most of the city, like it requires special permitting to build anything more than a single family home. And the fact that across most of the city, like this is even outside of Ward 9, but Ward 9 still suffers the effects of the artificially inflated rates, rents just because of it being illegal to build even duplexes and triplexes across a lot of Waltham. Thank you. Hi, Joe DeBalva, 11 Underwood Park, Ward 8. Um, I live right on the line of Newton, and there is, especially on my street, an extreme congestion of parking. Uh, even though there's plenty of, of off-street parking in the units, it has always been uh, very short. Now, I've seen with the recent plans that were announced for the park uh, on off of Moody Street and Skate Park that there would be parking added there. I would like to uh, suggest that that, be, that park be considered in the same way that all the rest of the public parking is in the city of Waltham lots, like, such as Embassy and so forth, and that it be allowed for overnight parking to hopefully re release some of the congestion there, particularly once Newton enacts its winter parking bans, we see a real uh, difficulty in, in, in anybody visiting down that area at any time of the day. Uh, towards public transportation, I would love to see us push more uh, the city for um, Sunday buses to be traveling because what ends up happening is you end up with uh, Sunday being kind of a bit of a ghost town, especially during the summer when we have Moody Street closed. Uh, the restaurants aren't able to get people down there for staffing, they aren't able to get people down there for dining, uh, and it just seems like the day is just a, an empty street or uh, you know makes Moody Street an empty street. So I'd love to see a push to, to try to get the MBTA to expand bus service in some way, shape, or form, even if it's extremely limited to Sundays. Thank you very much. Good evening. My name is Luke Haberman. I live at 35 Crescent Street, apartment 222. First of all, let me ask the council, how are you guys doing tonight? I'm doing very well. Thank you for holding this, getting our feedback. I really appreciate that. Um, I come here uh, on behalf of Critical Mass Waltham uh, and the Waltham cycling community. Critical Mass began in San Francisco in 1992, and they've opened up um, organizations across the country that host monthly bike rides uh, that protest the lack of safe bike riding infrastructure. Um, in communities like this, but, but others. Um, the chapter we recently started here in Waltham has held two rides. We're planning to uh, hold a third. Um, we'd love for you guys to come out. Um, we have ridden along Main Street, Lexington, Newton, Forest, Bacon, Lyman, and School Streets, to name a few. We have also biked to the high school and to existing rail infrastructure like the Charles River Greenway. For anyone wishing to commute in Waltham via bike, these are vital arterials that you must either ride along or at the very least cross. We travel these roads as a group to highlight how dangerous they are and experience um, choice behaviors from many drivers, um, including one police officer. <laughs> um, we, we chose these routes because they really highlight that if a teenager or a student wanted to bike to school, these are roads that they must travel, and on their ride, they'll encounter a singular half-mile stretch of bike lane that is almost unmarked and only exists on one side of the street. All over the world, and many of the comments tonight are highlighting um, why our roadways only exist for cars, or the common denominator is for a car. Um, and cycling infrastructure is particularly great because it's compatible with other uses. 
you see this on the Charles River Greenway, you'll see this on the bike cycling paths we do have, you'll see this on the rail trail when it does open up, that um, cyclists are able to intermingle and safely uh, share the road or the bike path with pedestrians. Uh, cycling and pedestrians are not compatible with motorized vehicles. This creates um, a ton of conflicts and a great risk of deadly crashes. Um, and the current infrastructure of shared arrows doesn't do enough to protect cyclists. Um, sure, there are existing cyclists that are out there, but it's in no way, shape, or form welcoming to any new bike riders. Um, in a car, we design, we design our roads nice and wide, our streets nice and wide. Um, and so, hmm? okay. Um, so that if a driver makes a mistake, then they're not left in a, they just get into a car accident. When a cyclist or a pedestrian makes a mistake, it can cost them their lives. So we really hope that you'll look at expanding uh, bike infrastructure in the city. Hi. <laughs> I'm short. <laughs> Uh, my name is Susan Davis. <clears throat> Excuse me. I live at 190 Moody. I've been here for two years. I lived in Ward 8. Now I live in Ward 9. I am a new resident. I love this city. However, when I think of planning, I think of long-term planning and short-term planning. Short-term planning for me is, please, could we have more receptacles for recycling? Could we have, please, cleaner streets? Could we have people who possibly donate their time and energy to cleaning up the areas around them? The Charles River is a most incredible body of water. And when I cross the bridge, there's a little collection area which I look down on and there's styrofoam containers, soccer balls, etc. I believe that this city can shine. And part of it would be to get rid of the litter and because the less litter there is, the more opportunity people have to be carefree of, well, there it is, let me throw down another bottle, let me throw down another, you know, whatever. So that would be my wish, and if there's a committee, I volunteer to be on it. So that's my two cents as a new resident. Okay. Hello, good evening. I am from Ward 8. I'd like to commend um, the City Council for its achievements recently, um, purchasing the UMass land and um, the World Avenue Bridge and taking down the Panthers building to be safe. Thank you, Kathy Ann. Um, I would love to see, you know, my wish for welfare, right? I'd love to see more trees. I second um, an earlier comment. Um, it beautifies, it cools the streets, and it's yeah, it's uh, also environmentally sound for other reasons. Um, my other, sorry, um, my two wishes are for more tree planting, and my other wish is that um, there is a dearth of housing in the Boston area, and you know if there could be, if the city council could. Um, be helpful to reasonable housing projects, um, that would be, I think, a great boon, not just to Waltham itself, but also the greater Boston area. Thank you. Yes, Justine Watt, 131 Ward Avenue. Thank you. Hello. Um, <laughs> it's not nice to laugh. <laughs> um, Jay Bigelow, I'm at 20 Garden Street. Uh, sorry, I just found out about this meeting two hours ago, so I didn't have really time to prepare much. Um, but, yeah.
Thank you. <laughs> oh, 20. 20 Gardner? Yep. So, a uh, couple areas I want to comment on. Uh, one, uh, public spaces. Um, first of all, Moody Street. Just don't open it again. It's fine the way it is. <laughs> um, the cars have figured out what to do now. You don't have to open it back up to all the vehicle traffic. Let it stay the open, great area that it is now. So, um, and next is um, playgrounds and parks. Um, the city has done a great job upgrading all of those over the last few years. It's been really nice to see. A uh, couple things that would make them astronomically better. One is more shade. You know, like the new park on Newton Street. Sorry, I forget the exact name of it. It's a great park. We tore down like half a dozen gigantic, gorgeous, well-established trees, and now there's no shade in the middle of it. And it, now it's just, now all the slides burn kids' butts on the way down half the year. So some shade sails or something, like some sort of canopies over the equipment would be great to just mitigate that so people can actually use these parks all the time instead of all that, you know, money basically going to waste a third of the time. It'd be great. Um, another thing about the parks, how about some bathrooms? <laughs> if you can tell a toddler to hold it all the way home, I commend you. It doesn't work. I've got three of them. So. <laughs> Um, and then the other main concern that we have, I uh, mean, my, my wife is at the school committee meeting, you know, upstairs. Um, yeah, affordability of housing, you know? Like, we have something here, but yeah, we, have, we were a family of three when we bought here. Now I have to fit five. <laughs> and everyone knows how much it costs to buy something else in this city. It's unaffordable, even for something like me and my wife. We have really well-paying jobs, and it's just not an affordable place to stay. Um, ways that we think could actually help that, I mean, one, you could be more uh, more cautious with the, with the developments that are getting approved. I think a lot of people have been saying that. I want to echo a lot of those concerns. Um, the Big thing that I've noticed, I even noticed this when we bought our place and we were, we were rehabilitating the house that we bought, um, it's impossible to navigate the zoning and just the building requirement, like all the like little minutiae of the zoning code, like parking rules and lot setbacks and all these things where a person can buy a house and they don't even know what they can do with it, like to just add an extra bedroom somewhere, you know? Um, Accessory dwelling units. Like, like Newton has a law that's been in place for a while to, add, to let people add in-law apartments to their house without, you know, you know, don't build another building in your house, but you know, yeah, you can convert space to an extra apartment that would create smaller apartments for people to rent out. It would be cheap, that can be rented out cheaper. So, yeah, um, that's pretty much all I got. So, like I said, I'm prepared, thank you. Good evening, counselors. I want to thank uh, Councillor Paz for uh, inviting me. I'm Gary Markowitz. I live at 60 Taylor Street in Ward 9. Um, I want to talk a little bit about my experience of coming here to Waltham now for the third time um, and buying finally on, uh, in a neighborhood that I, I hope will improve. The council will listen to some of the suggestions that have been stated here tonight. One of them is that there's trash everywhere in Ward 9. Um, it's from transient populations as well as from residents and visitors to Moody Street's Restaurant Row. People seem to disrespect Ward 9. It's not just the trash from people, though. It's the trash from our trash collection contractor. Easy. Well, easily, they just drop trash everywhere in Ward 9. I go to other wards. I often go to uh, Lexington to visit friends, cut through some neighborhoods. There's no trash on the street from Easy, but 
in Ward 9, they just drop it on the ground. They don't care. Um, I want to mention that I'm also the uh, volunteer for the Waltham Housing Authority as their energy and sustainability advisor. Um, and we've done quite a bit of some of the things that people have talked about tonight. Uh, we have much more to do. One of those things is take another look at the Fernald School plan and look at the land there and say, why not put a solar field, a solar farm there? There's land, it's properly um, um, angled and has uh, the ability to do that. Um, also, there seems to be an, a lack of action on reporting leaky gas lines on our streets. Um, I noticed a bunch of uh, gas lines being replaced on lots of streets in Ward 8. Ward 9 has yet to see the gas line replacements. The gas line replacements are necessary because gas leaks are killing our trees. There are more stumps on my neighborhood than there are trees, and more coming down as we talk. Another one just got labeled as dead and coming down. So National Grid has to be put on notice to please fix their gas lines. Leaky gas lines are bad for the environment and for global climate change. Um, sidewalks. A lot of our sidewalks on Taylor Street, Gordon, Hall, they're lumpy. That means that people pushing baby carriages, 10 seconds, <laughs> uh, have a, a lot of trouble in that area. There's also speeding on Lowell Street, lots of accidents as have been mentioned, and there's continuous parking in front of hydrants, and there's lack of enforcement. Thank you. Hi, good evening. Thank you for having me here tonight. My name is Jill Galding, and I should tell you right up front that I personally do not live in Waltham, but I am an interfaith chaplain. I'm part of an organization called Chaplains on the Way, and we support people who do live in Waltham, who are residents, but who are unhoused or homeless. So I'm here tonight to uh, make a request representing those folks and also to make an offer uh, to everybody here, including uh, the group that is working on the master plan, which is to say the request is please take these folks' interest into account. They are profoundly impacted by the work that you're doing. And also please accept their offer to be a conduit of useful information. People who are unhoused in Waltham know things about what works and what doesn't work in terms of affordable housing, in terms of the social systems, the safety nets that are supposed to help people when they hit a rough spot, in terms of what works and doesn't work about public transportation and so forth. So I, I hope that we can work together going forward and I'm just here as a representative. Um, in terms of, of how profoundly folks who are unhoused, who are residents of Waltham, can be affected by the policies that you are in charge of. I just want to point out that somebody that I um, held a memorial for recently, and I've held a lot of memorials recently, if we could all crane our necks and just look out the window, we would see where he died. And it was in, on Moody Street uh, in, a, in a little alcove by a church. Now this was a person who tried for years to get housing, who tried for years to get support with his substance use disorder. There just wasn't quite enough help of the type that he needed, and he was about my age, and he had a sister who loved him dearly. His name was Mike Sutherland, and I gave a memorial for him this year. There are many people like that, and I just want to name their names. There was William Clark, Guy Urbanic, Patrick McCarthy. It makes me cry, I'm sorry, I love these people, and their residents too. Barry Rollins, Raquel Scarlett, Mike Sutherland, Mike Perkins, a guy that we all knew as Mike the Bike. <laughs> and uh, just last night, another person who was Mike Perkins' nephew, yet another death of despair, Mike Kamalayan. And these folks, um, 
I don't want to just leave with an impression of, of death and despair, although those are words I want us to keep in mind. These are folks who meet weekly at the Commons, and it's not quite in Ward 8 or 9, but we'll be talking about that soon. And everybody in Waltham is invited. We have sandwiches there, we do a service there, and it's a place where housed and unhoused people come together. And I mention that because what I want to lift up is the community-mindedness of, of folks who are unhoused. Like, I don't actually know any, I know people who are as community-minded in Waltham, but I don't know anyone who's more community-minded. So that meeting that we have every week on the Commons, I see people who might have slept that night on the floor of a gazebo who are offering emotional and spiritual support to somebody who is housed, who might have had a death in the family or other grief. Uh, the Waltham Community Leadership Group, which raises up voices of people who are unhoused, meets for an hour and a half every single week to think about issues like this, including planning things like cleanups, which I hear matters to everybody, cleaning up trash. So uh, a lot of stories we could share, stories that might help this uh, panel make decisions. So thank you for hearing us tonight and look forward to working with you as this project unfolds. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Hi, my name is Chris Hammer. I live at 190 Adam Street. Uh, I'd like to start by voicing my question. I'd like to start by voicing my support for a more serious take on bike infrastructure. Waltham is already falling behind. Uh, we are doing some things. We're building our section of the Wayside Trail. George Darcy attempted to start a north Waltham down to that trail uh, bike path last night. Uh, but it's easy to see that those things aren't addressing wards eight and nine. It's not addressing the south side. The south side is the start of the uh, um, the, the river trail all the way down to Boston, yet there's no bike lanes helping residents access it or helping people coming out to reach the other Waltham business that they might come to. Uh, additionally, you know, we're falling so far behind our neighbors. Boston has uh, laid out in the next three years, 50% of their residents will live within a three minute walk of a protected bike path or bike, uh, bike lane on actual road infrastructure. Bike paths are great. We need actual bike lanes as well on the streets. They belong to everyone, the pedestrians, bikes, and the cars. Um, moving on from that, I'd also like to voice my support for shutting down Moody Street permanently. Uh, back in the 80s, Burlington, Vermont decided, let's try shutting down Church Street. If you Google Burlington, Vermont today, it's the 13 of the first 15 pictures are Church Street. We can make Moody Street the place to be. Um, and then finally, I'd like to ask for more government transparency. And best, best place to start is the Waltham website. Uh, if you go to the Waltham website right now, and go to the police page, for example, the annual report that it links to is the 2017 report. The master plan that I could find was from 05. It's just the easiest way to make your citizens know what's going on and be involved is to give them the information that they need when they need it. So, thank you. My name is Sue Adams. I live at 37 Riverview Avenue on the island. I'm uh, part of Ward 8. And I, I would upload any of the things that have been said today, but I really wanted to say I would upload much of what has been spoken of today. But I particularly want to talk a little bit about the Waltham Connections for Healthy Aging and looking at Waltham from a point of view or a perspective of an aging citizen. And I was part of the Waltham Connections for Healthy Aging, which has been working for a long time with the uh, Senior Center. And a lot has been done to, in, in the city to make, help Waltham continue to be a more welcoming community for older people. And as we know, there are a lot of older people. I'm one of them in Waltham. Um, but one of the things in particular I wanted to address was the uh, question of sidewalks and I noticed in the last few years there, have been a, there has been a good deal of attention paid to sidewalks especially in areas that haven't had sidewalks in the past but I'd like to address a part of town or parts of towns that have a large senior population and where the sidewalks are just in a terrible state of crumbling and I said to my neighbor Sue Hickey who just turned 90 that I would address this issue on her behalf. She has fallen on a sidewalk in front of her house before, and uh, her mobility isn't improved by that experience. 
and I'd like to suggest that we put more attention into, into crumbling sidewalks or make it possible for uh, homeowners or residents to try to improve their own sidewalks. Um, I understand that's not a possibility. And just one more thing, I would love to, um, again, uh, as a, a quote to something that's been addressed before, which is accessory housing units, which would make it much easier for many families, particularly those with older family members, to provide them with a reasonable place to live and also provide housing for their existing family. Thank you. Hi, my name's Adam Mark. I live directly across from Sue, and my sidewalk is a little crazy, too. Um, uh, 36 Riverview. 36 Riverview. Um, but I'm here to talk about the skate park um, and the plans for the skate park. Um, I think that it, the, whatever plans that I've seen, and I know a lot of people just saw some plans out of nowhere a few weeks ago and were like, whoa, what's going on? Um, I grew up in Waltham, and growing up here, we didn't have a skate park. We skated lots of public and private properties, doing all sorts of stunts and damage to all that. Um, and uh, I stopped skating, and then I st started skating again maybe 10 years ago in my mid-30s, and I loved that there was a skate park. Um, but right away, on a busy day, you can, you're can you like, all right, this, this is way too small. This is too small for, you got older people or experienced young skaters that are doing crazy stuff, and then you got little kids just starting or riding scooters or whatever, and it just, you know, gets a little crazy. And so when I saw that the plan for the skate park was to be even smaller than it is now, uh, just like, that's increasing the danger, I think, in this in this park. Um, also, size-wise, I feel like, well, I know, uh, having traveled around the state and seen different skate parks, um, there are different types of parks. There's like little skate spot parks, there's neighborhood parks, and then like regional parks where like you could have a contest and there's like parking enough for an event and stuff like that. There's no parking, real parking at this park, and I know in the plan there's gonna be some parking, but sharing that space with all the other sports or whatever. Um, yeah, I think it's kind of small, but perhaps um, I also wanted to say that the location of it excludes a whole chunk of kids that wouldn't be able to get here from the other, other side of Waltham. Like kids that maybe can't get a ride and would maybe skate to their park or something, you know, like, but that aren't going to be skating all the way from Lake Street to here. It's like a little dangerous. So, I don't know. I think uh, it should be looked at because maybe there's a, a more centralized location or maybe that there's a neighborhood park here and a neighborhood park there or something. I just feel like all the other parks and sports in the city have you know, a certain size and skateboarding has this one little thing, you know? Anyhow. Uh, also, I've never visited Booty Street more in the past two years than I have since it's been shut down. And I think it's really cool, so. <laughs> Hi, um, my name is Ajay Lagoni. This is Nick Morgis, um, Dan Hammer. We're not uh, residents of Waltham, we live in Newton, but we just wanted to bring to the, your attention sort of the importance of having a skate park in Waltham, not only for us, but for Waltham and for the greater community. So, um, Really, skateboarding is important to me and all of us. It's been a way for us to have a community in Waltham. Over quarantine, when everything was closed down, we would all go to the skate park. It was how I made friends. It was how I spent my days. I skated today. We all still skate, um, and we skate there every day. Waltham Skate Park isn't exactly like the best skate park. It's small. It's overcrowded. It has cracks. It's like over 20 years old. 
but the community there is still thriving nonetheless. So, like, uh, like you said already, if, if a city doesn't have a skate park, we've seen this in cities across the world. If cities don't have skate parks, skaters don't know what to do. They go into the city, they skate public property. It is damaging, it's really bad for the city in general, but if there's a skate park, there's a place where we can go. It's a place where we can have a belonging and have fun and do this now like Olympic sport together. So it would actually be really good for the city alone to have a skate park, just to sort of keep us off the streets, give us a place to go, and really sort of give way to this up and coming Olympic sport now. I gotta follow that. That was really good. Uh, Eric Toronto, uh, 105, Columbus Ave, Board 6. Might not be able to attend the meeting next week, so that's why I'm here today. Is that okay? Yeah, I can probably do that. Alright, All right, I appreciate that. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Sven Röbrich. I'm from Ward 9. I live in 20 Friend Street. I want to thank you for the opportunity to organize this here. It's very nice that we're being heard. Um, I've lived in Waltham for seven years now, and I really, really like it here. Over that time, I've seen a lot of improvements. I biked here tonight. I bike to work whenever I can. And I want to um, say that many things have gotten a lot better since I first came here and I want to acknowledge and appreciate these improvements. I also want to say that we should move forward in the same direction and use this master plan opportunity to build the city in ways that are giving infrastructure to sustainable energies and include the use of the roads for everyone, including bikes. So I think that is a really important point. I often go to the river with my trash picker and pick up what's flying around there, so that too is, I think, a real issue. And we want to make sure that this master plan addresses that in similar ways, that we um, find like a holistic plan that works for everyone, including the south side of Waltham. This uh, whole town is a wonderful place, really. It has a beautiful river going right through. It has two universities. It has the Fernal, you know, area. And all of those are gems that we have an opportunity now to really turn into public use for everyone. So I want to bring to the mind of the city council Please, not to just build luxury condos, but make sure that everyone gets uh, the opportunity to use these spaces, because they are all of our spaces. And reach for the top. There are bigger cities in the world that have had similar problems, and they have found great solutions. Look at Amsterdam, look at Copenhagen, look at Hamburg, look at Lisbon, to get some inspiration of what you can do. I really, really like the idea that Moody Street is closed for um, cars for a while in the, in the year, and someone said it earlier, I too have never spent this much time uh, in Moody Street and going to the restaurant, sitting outside, my family came visit me, I took them there. I would not have done that otherwise, and I think it's a great asset. And I just want to sharpen everyone's attention to the many beautiful pieces that we have right in front of us, and I want to encourage the City Council to make the best of it for everyone in the city. Thank you. Okay, now it's my side. So. Good evening, everybody. Citizens here at Waltham. And uh, I'm really a breezer, as they say in Waltham. Uh, I came here during the blizzard of 1978, moved to Waltham. I was serving with the Massachusetts National Guard at the time, and um, stopped over at uh, Sharon Street. And uh, that particular armory has now been sold, and um, 
couple of years ago, I think it's a couple of years ago. <laughs> Bill Kennedy, 15 Arlington Road in Arlington. And uh, getting back to Sharon Street and the armory, uh, I discovered that it was really all set up for males. And they have bathrooms and that downstairs in the armory. It's, sold, it's been sold out to uh, private enterprise, I understand, or religious. And as you know, a couple of years ago, here in Waltham behind City Hall, they set up tents for the homeless people. And I was thinking that there should be an investigation into the Sharon Street Armory and find out if it can be recycled for homeless people. And uh, as we all say, that's just one man's opinion. Um, as far as females are concerned, um, that's a separate issue that I, I won't address, but uh, I'm just talking about the Sharon Street, or former armory on Sharon Street, that it should be recycled. The other issue is city engineering. My opinion is that when I watch city council meetings, uh, I see the fire department there, and I see the uh, police department, but um, I don't see the historical department there. And why I bring up the historical department is that when engineering is, Waltham Engineering is talking either to the city council or to uh, segments of the city council. Uh, it would be an idea to consider inviting the historical people there and pointing out why certain streets were named. It's interesting. I live right on the border of Newton and Waltham in Ward 8. And I have underground streams that used to feed in the early part of the 20th century, not the 21st, 20th century, that um, they used to feed cranberries that go all the way down to the watch factory on a slope. And I think it would be a good consideration to look at when the council is meeting to invite some of the historical people there and point out Hey, wait a minute. Parmenter Road in Waltham was once called Cranberry Road. Well, why was it called Cranberry Road? Because it had underground streams that used to feed into the cranberries. So that is something to consider. And that's all I have to say. Good evening and thank you for listening. <laughs> Uh, hi, my name is Chris. Um, also not from Waltham, but I skate Waltham Skate Park every day. Understand that the city is going to do what they are going to do with the park, but we would like just some just would like some input so that it's good, so that you don't permanently build something that skaters don't use. That's it. My name is Robin Capello. Thank you. I have property, I have a business on 487 Moody Street, Ward 8. I'm the owner of the Tea Leaf, a tea parlor and art gallery. I'm also the president of Watch City Arts, and we have a gallery located inside the Tea Leaf, and it showcases local artists each month. We exist to empower and promote arts, culture, and tourism in Waltham. I can see the benefits of a monthly marketplace. 
with crafters and artisans. Having this on Moody Street as a pedestrian only area will improve the lives of many in the area. We have the experience of the community coming together with the success of the Raj Collection Fashion Show and the Car Show. The goals of having this proposed project, it would increase tourism, day trippers, art and culture, enrichment and financial gain to participants during monthly marketplace, accessibility to the marketplace for those with mobility issues, mobility scooters and wheelchairs. It'll increase the city's walkability score in Ward 8 and 9, promote diversity, equity and inclusion, create a safe place for being peaceful and connected. A goal would be to increase handicap parking. The community needs are there. The highest poverty rates in the consortium are found in Brookline, Framingham, and Waltham. Artists are at the top. The community need would be exposing school-aged children to the arts. We could host events that celebrate local history and cultural diversity, involve the community and the neighborhoods. Enrichment for vulnerable youth. A location for self-expression and interactive events for vulnerable adults. Promoting economic security and vitality for older adults ages 62 plus if they host craft tables, jewelry, and more. Enhancing Ward 8 and 9 economically through financial, for, through financing for the acquisition of single lots for parking expansion, increasing consumer traffic. The city of Waltham reported for all residents except arts, entertainment, and recreation, 20 seconds, a family with two full-time workers earning the industry average could rise above the low income level. Again, that's for all industries except art, entertainment, and recreation. We have a very thriving art community here and around us. Newton, Lexington, and Watertown. They're doing great. Thank you for your time. My name is Lisa Fruitt, 60 Taylor. Moved here a couple of years ago. Um, I live about three blocks off of Moody Street, and tonight everybody's been talking about what a wonderful asset Moody Street is, and it is. But when we walk it every day, we walk by 200 Moody, and we can't believe the blight that, that has brought to our street, our neighborhood, and our city. It's appalling. I used to come here years ago from Lexington to go to Jake and Earl's and enjoy whatever else was there. And it's been empty and it's become uh, a place where people go to hang out and uh, do some interesting things there. It's fallen apart, it's dangerous. Please do something about that space. I know it, there's a public-private partnership, something, but it's a real blight. And people come to Moody and we walk past it with them and they're like, what the heck is that? Thank you. Sorry for being late, I was at the back to school night upstairs. Um, my name is Emma Zumas. I live at 32 Cutter Street here in Waltham. Uh, and I'd like to talk to you from my perspective, not only as a parent in Waltham, uh, as a public health practitioner, and as a relatively new resident to Waltham. I moved to Waltham last summer. 
Uh, we moved from out of state. My husband and I are both from the Boston area, um, had lived in North Carolina for 10 years. And as we decided to move back to be close to our families, we were left with this big question of where do we move? The dual language school that Waltham has is honestly the linchpin that drew us to Waltham. Uh, we saw it as a commitment, a, an awareness of Waltham's acceptance of the brilliant diversity that we have here in Waltham, uh, as well as we saw it as an act of, uh, of action, right, to addressing the needs of all of the residents of Waltham. I'm aware that the past year, right, there were some budget cuts to, this, to the school budget that happened in the spring, and which obviously that doesn't only affect the dual language school, it affects all of the residents of Waltham, all of the educators in Waltham. We are feeling the effects here at the dual language school, and I urge you all, as you take this into account, to look at the dual language school and the programs that are offered at other schools in the area that are not being offered here. Uh, I'm going to talk to you all a little bit as a parent now um, and some of the reasons that drew us to Waltham as a parent. My children are in kindergarten and second grade here at the dual language school uh, and I, the way I move around in my daily life is very much with that hat on. Uh, we came here for the school, we came here because we heard about the open Moody Street, right? That was something very attractive that drew us here. The proximity of all of these assets that the South Side in particular has are exactly what brought us here, not only for school, but to work, to live, to play, to spend our money, all these things. The farmer's market, the Shaw's across the river, we have multiple uh, corner stores that we can walk to, we can bike to. The richness of the playgrounds that Waltham has, um, particularly in the south side, right? Gilmore, McKenna, the playground at Whittemore, Cutter Street playground on our street even. Uh, all of these things are things that as a parent, as someone who wants to raise a family, right, this is what drew us to Waltham. There are a number of assets that could be reachable from the south side, which aren't geographically located in the south side, which if we were to address our built environment, our infrastructure, would be so accessible by bike. The library across town, um, the Waltham Fields Community Farm across town, any of the number of green spaces, Beaverbrook North, uh, Stonehurst, the amazing sports complex up on Forest Street, right, that hundreds of Waltham families converge on every weekend for soccer. All of those are within a two to three mile radius of the south side, and yet we have zero <laughs> built infrastructure to allow us to get there safely outside of a car. Even with my children, my youngest has been riding a two-wheel bicycle since he was two and a half years old. I would love to be able to transport for our daily commutes, our daily everything, right, to get us out of a car. The kids are happier when we can walk and bike, right? They're not angry <laughs> to get in the car, get strapped into those seatbelts to sit in a car in traffic across town, right? They're happier, they have so much energy, they're not sitting in front of a tablet when they're out moving around. Um, so please, I urge you to input some built environment infrastructure, particularly for pedestrians and cy cyclists, so we can get around safely. Um, I have more than that, but thank you all for listening. I really appreciate you making this opportunity available to us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I wasn't really coming here to speak. I, I came here to listen, um, and three minutes is not enough, so I'm happy to provide something to the committee and also make it public about what should be considered here in the master plan. Um, I did want to share the remarks of a constituent who couldn't make it here, if that's okay, Mr. Chair. Um, so this is from Lydia DeRoches. Uh, you know, she, she made a list here, but I thought it was very important for folks here to listen because there's a lot of common themes. 
Uh, number one, hire a qualified professional city planner with an effective and efficient staff. Use research and evidence-based information to drive appropriate decision-making. Remediate outstanding issues that have gone unaddressed for years. Replacing trees, especially on the south side, that have to be cut down. Use concrete, which is better for our environment, as opposed to blacktop to replace existing sidewalks. Uh, making use of a more sustainable material for berms. The city needs to lead by example by making all green spaces sustainable, educate and encourage residents to do the same, encourage residents and property owners to make environmentally sound improvements and changes, i.e. adhere to the laws and guidelines set forth by the state of Massachusetts and the Department of Fire Safety regarding ownership and use of barbecue grills. Uh, improve our public transportation system in Waltham with frequent, safe, clean, and state-of-the-art transportation for students, resi residents, and visitors. Build a public transportation hub worthy of the city of Waltham. Um, institute residential parking, especially in the areas where diners and commuters park in spaces that should be for tax-paying residents. This happens even as the municipal parking lots are underused. Um, I'm going to just skip to the end because I think this can be lengthy. Um, reasonable access to Wi-Fi for low-income residents, um, and the city needs to develop true affordable housing and not depend on outside developers. So I just, I, I'm going to forward this to the committee. Uh, it's a long list, but uh, I do appreciate everyone here from Ward 9 for not leaving anything to the imagination. So shout out to you guys. Thank you. speakers here today, but Waltham has been my home longer than anywhere else. Uh, I am extremely honored to serve the community, and I do see a city council position as a point of service, and I'm grateful to do that. I'm grateful to all the residents on, on both Ward in, uh, 8 and 9 who came in tonight, and many could not make it. Uh, I have several emails, and I will be submitting that along with this plan. Really what I want to say is that I hear you, I hear you, I hear you. We do need a very, and I'm a planner, right? And those of you who know my career in, in politics and, in, and even before this, I was a community organizer. I plan, work that plan, execute that plan, succeed with that plan. And it is all about bringing the community together to make Waltham a wonderful place to live. Um, I do think that we play a role in the council to create affordable housing, and I uh, will be working on efforts uh, to make that happen uh, this year. Um, we did do some inclusionary zoning, but that's not enough, and you have a commitment from me tonight to, to move that forward. Um, I heard you also loud and clear about Booty Street, and I want to thank the mayor and the traffic commission for their bravery during COVID when we were really unsure what would happen to the future of small business in the city and the street was closed and the rest is history. The pedestrianization of Booty Street to me is um, something that the residents look for, businesses look for, and when you do walk home tonight, because many of you told me there wasn't enough parking here, uh, you, you will see that it's one of the safest places to walk. And uh, you know, having that, I think, is a gem that we should continue to invest in that and, and really make it world class. If we're going to do that for Moody Street and, and, and support our small businesses, we've, we've got to have a parking plan. I know that um, some folks feel that we should trade parking lots for other things. Parking lots are part of a master plan. You have to have safe places for cars, for bikes, and I heard that tonight, bike infrastructure, and for pedestrians. And you need a, you need a place to be able to park. Some of the uh, residents, uh, you know, have use overflow parking in these lots. It's not just for the businesses, and I, I want to stress that expansion of that and using our lots smart, in a smart way, I think, is what we need to look at. I also heard tonight, trees, trees, trees. 
And in every single special permit I've worked on, I have pushed for more trees in other areas of the city, and I have pushed for trees to be planted uh, in Ward 8. Um, I reach out to residents all the time, and we work with the uh, tree warden and CPW to get trees planted. And we, uh, we're going to continue to do that and put more trees in our city. And while they grows their own trees, um, we should put them all throughout the south side. The other thing I heard tonight that wasn't said but was presented to me by a resident is to protect these single-family neighborhoods from overdevelopment. As we think about creating housing, we also have to think about preserving what we have. And these neighborhoods are truly a treasure. Um, those, those you guys all, all live in them. Um, we don't want to see 15 houses knocked down and a big box put up. That would be absolutely devastating uh, without a plan and certainly would impact a, a, a neighborhood um, that is predominantly single family and two family. I'm also going to focus on pedestrian safety. I heard that tonight around bike uh, infrastructure and pedestrian safety is critical. I have a couple of advocates here tonight. I have really thanked your input. Um, we are uh, going to work on that, and that's getting paint on the street. It is slowing cars down. They are in neighborhoods. Uh, one of my residents uh, emailed today and said they want to see the, the adoption of raised tables like they had in Watertown. Police and fire can get over them, you can still plow the street, but it slows down a car without creating a stopping situation so that the traffic is slow enough for people to be able to cross the street. I'm going to continue to focus on green space, working with the mayor and the city, Ward Abbott, Contusion Park, and I want to thank the skateboarders for coming in tonight. You guys rock. You're awesome. Nice job. And also, it's, it's been a journey for all of us, but the Fitch School, you know, needs to be realized as a green space and working with that community on Ash Street to make that happen. I heard from the community out on Riverview that paving is critical. We also need safe sidewalks, right? And where trees have invaded and invasive and raised sidewalks two to three feet, we need to take those trees down, build the sidewalk, and put a new tree up. And um, I've already stressed it again, but I really think speeding needs to be addressed in Ward 8. I've heard mostly in preparation for tonight's meeting. Uh, Lowell, Newton, and Derby are just racetracks, and then on top of that, Crescent. So thank you all very much. Street, but uh, I occupy um, 104 uh, Potter Street, it's literally right, right around the corner. Um, the whole green zone with um, that refers to the whole uh, campus establishments is, I don't want to say unfair because I think that's an understatement. Just because my location is a is an industrial location, but yet I can't act upon it as an industrial location. So the the um, the zoning requirements for uh, for any cannabis establishment is pretty much in Bay Hill Road, and everybody know everybody that's from Waltham knows that getting a spot in Bay Hill Road is upwards to millions and millions and millions of dollars. Now. You know, I, I've, I've made money playing in the NFL, believe me, but I, I didn't stay that long. <laughs> I didn't play that long without have millions to give up like that. Um, I understand that not everybody um, is for cannabis establishments in Waltham, but as a city, we did vote for, uh, for recreational in 2016. We're now in 2022, and there hasn't been one recreational uh, location that, that opened up. Yeah, so six years, we haven't opened up one. And there is about, I believe, 10 in a 20 mile radius from us. So that's, that's tax money that is, uh, that is not coming to Waltham. That's tax money that Newton is seeing, that's tax money that Watertown is seeing, that's tax money that every, every other location is seeing besides us. Again, I understand if you are not 
for cannabis. But again, I'm gonna repeat again, in 2016, as a, as a, as a community, we decided that we will, we will vote yes to, uh, for, uh, for recreation. Yes, ma'am. Yes, cannabis. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, I'm, I'm, st I'm still in coaching, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, so again, um, so on 104 Pine Street, I, I wanted to open up a micro business, which is strictly cultivation manufacturing. No sale to sale. You won't, you won't have to worry about um, about traffic because again, it's just cultivation and manufacturing. The only the only traffic you're gonna see is is two is two vans leaving leaving 104 Pine Street. So two vans leaving 104 Pine Street shouldn't be a deciding factor for why I can't I cannot open up a uh, a cannabis establishment in Walton, Massachusetts. And it's not like I'm not from Walton. I'm born and raised here. Brought up through the public school system. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I play sports. I've never been arrested. You know, <laughs> listen. Like it just kills me because I've spent how many years has it been now? Three years. Three years spending money on a location that I'm hoping that I can use. And again, I just I just think we have to reevaluate our the, the, the whole zoning situation with cannabis because you know to to, to certain businesses for cannabis. I understand if it was dis if it was a dispensary, having having a dispensary on Moody Street. Sorry, having a dispensary on Moody Street, I understand why why, why people are like no, we, we don't want that because yeah, traffic will go crazy. I, I get that, but again, for cultivation manufacturing. It would be literally nothing. But again, you guys are asking me to put up 40,000, 50,000 just to just to just to tell you guys that there will be no traffic, which is crazy. And that's pretty much all I gotta say. Man. Just just please lift the lift the variances because I know because mechanic the mechanic park and uh, Bay Booth Park is right there. Just please lift those variances and, and let me run a business of all that. Please. Uh, my residential address is 22 Howard Street. Thank you. How you doing? My name is uh, Marcus Batista. I'm of 29 Taylor Street. Uh, one thing I wanted to address is, I know other people have brought it up as affordable housing, but I'm talking about a, a affordable housing for like residents have been long-term residents of Waltham. As someone who's went through the school system as Walton, been born and raised in Waltham, um, all my friends, not all of them, but practically all of them that have bought enough house have had to buy out of Waltham to a, uh, another community. Um, I'm not sure if there's like some programs where we can help long-term residents of Waltham not be displaced and have to move to another city when they uh, decide to start a family. Um, my other issue I'd like to talk about is the Moody Street shutdown. As a resident of Taylor Street, actually on the first block before Moody Street, Moody Street being shut down, I'm 50-50 both ways. I see the positive impact of the community, but for the residents that live in the first block where the one way runs into Moody Street, there's always an issue of high traffic coming up the one way to get to Hall Street. All the signings on the left-hand side, it's all blocked by cars, so, Normally, if they're coming from Moody Street where they would take the left onto Gorham, they're flying up Taylor Street on a one-way, flying up. Um, so I'd like to see maybe if we're going to shut it down again next year, maybe if there's improvements, because I'm not against the shutdown. I see the benefits for the business. It's a beautiful place to be able to walk. You know, you could walk your little child on the open of Moody Street, not just on the sidewalk. And uh, so, yeah, those are the two things I'd like to see. Marcus Batista? Thank you. Hi, my name is Yuen Kwan. I'm at 17 Charles Street Ave in Ward 9. My husband and I have been living in Waltham since 2008. We started renting in Ward 5 and we like it so much that we bought a house in Ward 9. 
I'm a parent um, at dual language school. My son goes to school here. This is his fifth year. He's in fourth grade. Uh, my main, the main um, point I want to make is about having safer infrastructure for bikers like me and my son. We live one mile from the school. We bike about half of the year when the weather is nice. But we live by 99 and we go down Prospect Street. And if you've been down to Prospect Street during any time, the traffic is terrible and the Prospect Street bridge is also narrow and dangerous. So we try to bike on the sidewalk, but then we have to avoid the pedestrians. We don't want to be in their way. There's just no safe way for us to get to school. And I, you can take the school bus, but riding on bikes is a healthy way, good way to start the day, good way to come home. He also is starting with the Honors Orchestra um, with Boston Public School this week, and it's at Kennedy. So we go from here to Kennedy, is two and a half miles, which is a very easy distance to bike. But imagine biking down Moody Street during when it's not closed, and then up Lexington Street all the way up. It's also very dangerous. We're going to try it this week and see what happens. But I just would love to have better, safer bike infrastructure so that we can get to places most as the other parents said, most places from the south side is two to three miles, very doable with biking. And if you drive your car from here, finding parking here to pick up a child, driving up to Kennedy, it takes just as much time to ride our bikes. And then we reduce traffic congestion, better for the environment. So what the master plan is, hope you can add more consideration for bikers. Thank you. Mm -hmm.